Hello, everybody. In the last video of this series, we talked about misconceptions regarding the connections of Lenin and Trotsky. Today, we're going to be looking at claims surrounding Lenin's testament and, subsequently, Stalin's initial rise to power. Before I get into this discussion, I just want to remind everybody that if they would like to help support the channel and help me make videos more frequently, they can contribute to my Buy Me A Coffee page. I'll talk about that a little bit more, though, at the end of the video. Right now, let's get into this discussion. Let's take a look at the notion that Lenin, despite the many criticisms that I referenced in the prior video that were made against Trotsky, actually aimed for Trotsky to act as his successor as General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. This notion is based on what is the so-called Testament of Lenin, otherwise known as Lenin's final letters and documents to the party before his death. Despite many Trotskyists, throughout the years using this supposed testament as justification for the notion that Trotsky should have led the Central Committee after Lenin's death, Trotsky himself initially denied the existence of such documents. What I'm about to read is a direct quote from Leon Trotsky from his document Letter on Eastman's Book from July of 1925. And I quote, Comrade Lenin has not left any testament. The character of his relations to the party and the character of the party itself preclude the possibility of such a testament. The bourgeois and Menshevik press generally understand under the designation of testament one of Comrade Lenin's letters, which is so much altered as to be almost unrecognizable, in which he gives the party some organizational advice. The 13th Party Congress devoted the greatest attention to this and to the other letters, and drew the appropriate conclusions. All talk with regard to a concealed or mutilated testament is nothing but a despicable lie, directed against the will of Comrade Lenin and against the interests of the party created by him. A quote-unquote testament was released to the 13th Congress of the CPSU later on, However, there was no explicit or even implicit claim of Trotsky to be the true successor to Lenin. Lenin provides criticisms of both Trotsky and Stalin, and while he indeed refers to Trotsky as, and I quote, perhaps the most capable man in the present Central Committee, Lenin would go on to say, but he has displayed excessive self-assurance and shown excessive preoccupation with the purely administrative side of the work essentially saying that Trotsky is too cocky and that he himself would essentially be involved so far into the administrative work that a bureaucracy would go on to form, a claim that would be later made against Stalin by Trotsky and his followers. On the question of criticisms against Stalin, there are no criticisms present in regard to Stalin's political ability to be found in these texts. While, indeed, Lenin claimed that Stalin may not always use his power with quote-unquote sufficient caution, Lenin would go on to further say that this, along with the suggestion that Stalin be removed from office, was only based on the notion that Stalin was a rude man, quote-unquote. According to Maria Ulyanova, while Lenin and Stalin did have an incident that occurred prior to Lenin succumbing to illness, this disagreement was purely on a personal level rather than a political one. The incident in question relates to an issue of Lenin's health and recovery. The time of late 1922 to early 1923 was, in terms of wellness, not a good time for Lenin. He had been recovering from a stroke, among other ailments, and was in need of great rest and time for recovery. The instance of Stalin's supposed rudeness was a minor altercation in a phone call between Stalin and Lenin's wife, Nadezhda Konstantinovna, regarding doctor's orders for Lenin's recovery. Naturally, Lenin, even in his sickness, was greatly upset with somebody being rude to his wife, as any loving husband would be. In a 1923 letter to Stalin, Lenin writes, and I quote, You have been so rude as to summon my wife to the telephone and use bad language. Lenin continues, I have no intention of forgetting so easily what has been done against me, and it goes without saying that what has been done against my wife, I consider being done against me as well. End quote. Stalin, in the initial phone call, would say to Konstantinovna, and I quote, 
The doctors have forbidden any political information to be given to Ilyik. They consider this routine the most effective method to cure him, whereas you, Nadezda Konstantinovna, are violating this routine. To play with the life of Ilyik is not allowed. Stalin would also go on to write, I do not think that these words can be seen as anything rude or impermissible directed against you, nor did I proceed from any other purposes other than your quick recovery. Moreover, I think it my duty to see that this routine is maintained. My explanation to Nadezhda Konstantinovna confirms that there was nothing except a simple misunderstanding. On the subject of this rudeness mentioned before, Stalin would provide further comment on these accusations in a speech of his from 1927. Speaking of the will of Lenin, Stalin addresses the claim of rudeness being reason for his removal from the position of general secretary as being a political issue. And I quote, Yes, comrades, I am rude to those who grossly and perfidiously wreck and split the party. I have never concealed this and do not conceal it now. Perhaps some mildness is needed in the treatment of splitters, but I am a bad hand at that. Stalin would go on to say, It is characteristic that there is not a word, not a hint in the will about Stalin having made mistakes. It refers only to Stalin's rudeness. But rudeness is not and cannot be counted as a defect in Stalin's political line or position. This concludes the actual history of this video. All of the sources I've used will be listed in the description. Next time, we're going to be taking a look at the misconceptions regarding Stalin's tenure as leader of the Communist Party and his multiple attempts to resign from his position. As I briefly mentioned earlier in the video, uh, anybody who has the means to and would like to can help support my work and this channel via my Buy Me A Coffee page. There are two options, a one-time donation or signing up to be a part of the monthly membership. A one-time donation can be as little as $1, and the monthly membership is only $5 a month, and the membership comes with a few perks. Those who join the monthly membership will have their names listed at the end of each video as a thank you, will receive an exclusive list of recommended readings, and I'm trying to think of something cool for a third perk. I can't do, you know, physical merchandise just because that's not financially viable, but maybe something along the lines of, you know, a minor collaboration, or an exclusive live stream, or something along those lines. Let me know what you think might be a good idea for a third membership perk. Any and all contributions are extremely appreciated. I've also thought of starting a Patreon, so if people are more comfortable making contributions on Patreon instead of buy me a coffee, because Patreon is just more widely used, then they'll have that option as well. Not sure when that's going to be actually completed, but I'm in the process of, you know, just working out how I want this Patreon to be. My name is Jimmy. Thank you for watching.